Up next is our second keynote segment, a conversation about closing the STEM opportunity divide here in the US between Professor Anne Weisberg and Gabe Hansel Sello. Professor Anne is the adjunct professor of management at the NYU School of Business and a recognized expert and thought leader on creating inclusive, high-performing workplaces. Gab Gabe Hansel Sello is the National STEM Director at Growth Sector, a nonprofit which supports community college students by creating pathways to high-quality, high-paying STEM jobs. Over to you, Anne. Thank you, Maya. Uh, Gabe and I are just thrilled to be here to further the legacy of Joy Thomas. Uh, of course, neither of us knew him, but um, as we've heard over and over today, uh, Joy was a very humble person who really treated everyone with respect and curiosity. And we hope that you bring that same mindset to the conversation that we're about to have about how to disrupt the current thinking about talent to create a more diverse and equitable workforce here in the US uh, around STEM. So basically we're gonna do this um, quickly in three parts. Uh, we're gonna start out with the why, why you need to be thinking about this differently. Then a little bit about the how, and Gabe's gonna tell you a lot about what um, his organization's been doing. And then we have an ask for you. So um, in terms of the why, I think the first thing to understand is that this whole issue of um, an, you know, talent in, the, in STEM uh, fields is not about ambition or aspiration. Um, a, a study done recently showed that 40% of Black and Latinx high school students are really interested in STEM, but only 3% of them are enrolled in AP STEM courses. And the same is true for women. There's been lots of studies about how girls are really interested in STEM um, subjects, but they're not, you know, they're not showing up in these uh, programs um, reflecting that ambition. So why is that? And really it's kind of two, there are two sides to this coin. The first is that frankly, stereotypes keep teachers from encouraging students, Black, Latinx, you know, girls to go into these courses. They think um, that they're not going to make it, they're too difficult, they're not going to want to do it. Um, and conversely, the stereotype threat, which is this um, well-documented uh, dynamic where, um, you know, if you're a, a minority in, a, in any situation, you feel that you know, you're not gonna be successful holds those people back. So as a result, we have, you know, a total lack of progress in terms of the numbers of uh, black, Latinx and women in these um, subjects in college. Those numbers haven't changed at all. In fact, they've gone down a little bit. Um, women are only 19% of computer science um, students, undergrads in the US and only 25% of the workforce, for example. Um, and this issue is only gonna get worse. The war for talent is only gonna get worse for the um, tech sector because the climate, clean energy um, area with all the investments that's happened at the federal level in the US, that we're anticipating a million new jobs in that space for every year for the next 10 years. So where are all these students gonna come from? Where are all these people gonna come from? And now to answer that question, I'm turning it over to Gabe. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, thank you, Anne, so much. You know, Growth Sector is the nonprofit I work for. We've really focused our efforts in broadening participation in engineering and computer science on the pool of students in community colleges um, for a number of reasons. There's about 2 million community college students in California. Um, the numbers are down right now, maybe about eight, eight million across the country. Uh, and, and community colleges, you know, one of the things that's important to note about them is they they directly reflect the diversity of the nation as a whole um, in, in terms of the students that, that attend community colleges. They're open access. Um, they're the most affordable uh, place for post-secondary education in the United States. And um, they serve um, all students. So there's very low uh, requirement to, to enter. Um, 
you know, you don't even need a high school diploma, although most students um, in community college have them. So that's really been the, the focus of our work has been uh, on community college students. I think when you look at community college students, though, you start to understand, um, as Anne began, you know, some of the challenges that they're up against. And one of the things that, that I found in my work with growth sector is um, for students who don't have someone in their family or immediate social network or neighborhood that works in STEM or in tech, it can be hard for them to see themselves going into those careers. Um, when, um, when we work with students who enter community college, one of the big challenges that they have is, you know, they may know that engineers build bridges and um, computer scientists write code, but they don't know the wide ranges of careers. Um, they, they may know who Elon Musk is, but, but they don't know um, some of the other amazing entrepreneurs and engineers really creating uh, hundreds of thousands of jobs in these areas. And so um, a lot of the work that we do is to help students understand all the different types of STEM jobs and careers that are out there. Um, again, an another challenge I would say for students is um, the lack of math preparation. We'll get into that more in a second. But um, so much of um, economic, uh, academic success in, in the United States is based upon a student zip code where they live. You know, it's the strongest predictor of academic success. And so we know that it's an unequal playing field in the, you know, K through 12, the elementary and high school spaces. And so um, we look, growth sectors work really looks to try and level that playing field when students get to community college through a number of interventions. So tell us, Gabe, what, what, are, what's, what are your big um, programs and initiatives? Absolutely. So our flagship program is called the STEM Core, and it really focuses on kind of the top of the talent funnel, so to speak. Um, when, when we look at community colleges, they have some great programs to help students transfer to four-year universities. So if you attend community college in the Bay Area and you get all A's in engineering and math, you can transfer to UC Berkeley. Those pathways are laid out for you. The challenge is engaging those students, especially students of color, women uh, into those pathways and helping them um, get on the path, so to speak. So our STEM core program, one uh, has three main pillars. The first focus is math. About um, three quarters of students enter community college at uh, like essentially eighth grade level math, like beginning algebra is, is where they're at. Um, the second pillar is fit. So we create um, student, uh, we create communities, uh, cohort based learning communities where students take courses together. And the third pillar is finances. We recognize that about 80% of our students have to work while they're in school. They're supporting themselves, they're supporting their families. And so we try to create as many income generating opportunities as possible. Um, so quickly, I can talk about the STEM core starts with paid bridge programs. So before in the summer before college, students do six weeks where they learn um, kind of math fundamentals, algebra fundamentals, and uh, hands on engineering and computer science modules to the extent possible submitted by employers. So they're starting to build up a resume that doesn't just talk about their class projects, but you know, it can be a cybersecurity audit for Lawrence Livermore Lab or um, a robotics test for uh, a startup here in the Bay Area, uh, which has been great. And then in the bridge program, they also learn kind of college knowledge. Students then move into academic year cohorts. Our goal is to get students to calculus readiness in that first year. I know we have a lot of engineers and computer scientists on here who see calculus as the starting point. But again, when we're looking at this population of students, about 75% starting in eighth grade level math. Um, it often takes, you know, three courses to get them to calculus in that first year. They're taking intro engineering and computer science courses while they're there. They're hearing from guest speakers and industry professionals to understand all the opportunities in STEM. And then we place students into early internships. Um, many of you are aware the traditional engineering internship or computer science internship often happens after like junior year of undergraduate studies. Students are told you did great. Uh, in August, you know, come back in June when you've got your bachelor's degree, we'll hire you. We're placing students into paid internships at calculus with maybe two engineering or two computer science courses. This is really critical. One, it helps students get experience. Two, they're generating income as soon as that first summer um, after two semesters. And three, they're starting to learn what do they like to do? And I always tell the story. We had a community college student who uh, got a computer science internship he called me, you know, two days in and is like, all I'm doing is sitting at my computer. They expect me to code all day. It's like, yeah, you're in software development. 
Um, but he, he just didn't know, you know, he, he wasn't aware. And so uh, he, he did great. He completed his internship and changed to environmental engineering where he had a successful yeah. career. So um, those are the main pillars of the STEM core program. And it, it's been extremely successful. About two thirds of our students achieve calculus readiness in one year. Um, and we placed over 500 into, you know, life-changing internships with com you know, companies like Tesla and Salesforce and national labs uh, and uh, undergraduate research opportunities as well. Great. And I just want to um, follow up Gabe's example, like um, in paid internships, they can be over the summer, but they can also be short internships, you know, during um, winter breaks, uh, you know, um, breaks of, of different sorts in, in the community college calendar. And um, when I was the women's initiative director at a law firm here in New York, we did that with um, women um, for three weeks who were in the uh, CUNY system, which is the College University of New York system. And um, those are public universities, you know, public colleges and they they had an incredible experience and all of them have stayed with you know uh wanting to be in IT so that was th those experiences are really important for people to get a sense of what this world is and want and a desire to be part of it yep. so here here comes the ask <laughs> um the, we have two asks for you the first is to really understand what are the talent pain points in your companies. Because I think most executives have some idea of it, but they might not really understand the, the scale of the issue, especially in um, STEM. Uh, so ask your HR person, ask your, you know, the 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 your recruiters, like what what are the pain points? Um, is there what is your case for expanding beyond what you're already doing to really look at these new pockets and new areas of of talent like community colleges? And the second ask is to pilot uh, an internship, a paid internship in your department or in your you know any business area where you have some control. Just try it and. Um, I encourage you to reach out to Gabe and, and the others that Maya has mentioned um, to, to just set one up and see what happens. I think you'll be really surprised and, and inspired by the results. Okay, over back over to you, Maya. Thank you so much, Anne and Gabe. I loved listening to your perspectives and ideas on how to promote equity for STEM in colleges and in the workplace. You know, for underserved students, just breaking into STEM or breaking into the workforce presents such a significant barrier. What we're looking for are employers in the US to offer internships and shadowing opportunities. Anne mentioned these short in internships and, and here's my new favorite word, a sprinternship. It could just be for two weeks or three weeks or it could be a summer long internship. We're also looking for um, donors to support these internships because these students cannot afford an un unpaid internship. It will cost about $2,500 to support a student for a four to six week summer internship. And you know, if we would, we are also looking for shadowing opportunities. Can you host a cohort at your, at your company just to give them a sense of the environment that you're working on? All these would, would, would help enhance their you know, their worldview on, on what they'd like to be. So please go to our website, pledge and volunteer. <laughs>